closing would be to comment on promises kept or broken. When we make an opening statement, we are really promising the production of evidence to the jury. We're making promises to the jury. Uh, we're promising that we're going to prove this or we're going to prove that. It is, a, it is entirely appropriate in closing for the attorneys to comment or to discuss whether those promises were kept. For example, if the prosecution has promised to bring a strong case in the firefighter case, the defense attorney can comment on that. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in his opening statement, the, uh, the attorney for the prosecution or for the, for the plaintiff promised that uh, he would bring the evidence to prove that my client was in a hurry, was inattentive. He has failed to do that and so on. So that, that's, that's a totally, totally appropriate to do in closing argument. Um, in a civil case, another tool is entirely appropriate to argue damages, to argue damages, uh, to discuss how much damage occurred, damage to car, medical expenses, car expenses, and uh, to, to paint for the jury a picture of where the, def where the plaintiff is now what the standard of life, what the quality of life is as a result of, of the accident. Um, finally, and this is perhaps one of the most important things I think for, uh, most, one of the most important tools for attorneys to use in closing argument, is to apply the law. And I think this is one, one uh, of the things that some attorneys fail to do for example, in a criminal case, and your, uh, the, the firefighter case, of course, is a civil case. It's a dispute between two individuals, the two drivers. The, uh, the case that uh, is in your book is a criminal case. It's a, it's a case of the government against Bob Smith. And Bob Smith is accused of committing a crime. One of the things that the prosecution has to prove is that each element of the offense was met. The elements are the individual facts that the defendant must prove, a kind of checklist that the defense, that, excuse me, that the prosecution must prove in order to prevail in a case. Um, I have, uh, uh, I have lots of, uh, heroes as attorneys. One of my other heroes is a criminal defense attorney by the name of Jerry Spence. Jerry Spence uh, uh, lives in Wyoming, which is a western state. He's kind of a cowboy, wears a cowboy hat to court, wears cowboy boots on his feet. Um, he is a very, very successful trial attorney. And when I was a young attorney, uh, in federal court in Salt Lake City, I once had the chance to watch Jerry Spence make a closing argument in a jury trial, in a criminal in a federal criminal trial. And it was very interesting. Um, what what uh, Jerry Spence did is he actually brought into the courtroom a uh, a milking stool. Uh, this is this is not a milking stool, but it's a little chair, a little stool. I think the Russian word is. Dainia Taboretka. Dainia Taboretka. It's what, uh, it's what you sit on when, uh, when you milk a cow. So if you sit, sit on the stool, you can milk the cow and get the milk and then drink the milk. But you'll notice that the, the stool has legs. This particular stool has four legs. Uh, some milking stools have three legs. And what, uh, what Jerry Spence did in this trial is he actually brought into court a milking stool and he said, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in order to convict my client of this crime, the government must prove three things. And then he listed those three things and he pointed, or, or let's say this example, four things. The, the government must prove four things. And then he pointed to each of these things and referred to them as a leg of the stool. And uh, he then said, the government has to prove all of those things, not just one or two, has to prove all of those elements. And if the government fails to do that, 
the case will fall. And then what he did is he actually had a milking stool and he unscrewed one of the legs of the case, uh, uh, one of the legs of the stool, and he put it on the floor and it fell over. And I thought that was that was actually just a brilliant uh, a brilliant tool to use in closing. But that is a that is a powerful tool that uh, both the prosecution and the defense, or both the plaintiff and the defendant can use in closing, is to tell the jury, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, here is what I as the plaintiff must prove. Or ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the plaintiff must prove these three things or four things or five things. And, and uh, we will admit that uh, the plaintiff has proven three things, but not the fourth. And so the case must fail. I think that's a, that's a powerful thing. And I think, I think in any case that you are involved with, that you need to get in touch with or, or become acquainted with the elements of the case, to read the statute, read the law, and find out what must be proved, and, uh, and use that in, in, your, in your closing argument. We're going to take a little break now. When I come back from the break, then we will talk about how to plan and execute your closing argument.